Welcome back to Women Sera. Nampak Karen kau segment lek ya, nampak kita kerana ini anda kau dah lada Doctor Parul Kamal ana dermatologist ana. Nampak diskusi am boleh hair fall nak kuri cerana. Nampak kerana nampak itu orang orang dalam semua orang efektif ini problem ana hair fall ini barang ini. Apa semua orang melihat orang orang dengan doubt selang clear ya. So once again welcome to Karen kau. Doctor, welcome to the show. Thank you. Doctor, now uh, everyone is complaining of this very common problem that is hair fall. What is an air, hair fall actually? How can we describe it? Okay, actually we all, uh, in our everyday life, we go through this hair shedding. Okay. It is a very normal part of life. Okay. Uh, we all go through hair, little hair fall here and there. Mm -hmm. While we are combing our hairs or while we are taking a shower, mm -hmm. we all experience little hair fall here and yeah, there. Yeah. But when and in our body, there is a natural cycle in which the hair grows also. Okay. So when the cycle is disrupted mm -hmm. and the hair fall becomes more than the hair growth, mm. then there is an evidence of more than 100, falling 100 hairs per day. Okay. So when the hairs, when we visibly see them, that they are approximately more than 100 hairs per day mm. falling down, then we call it as hair fall. So you mean to say that normally we shed around 100 uh, hairs per day? Yes. Really, normally, that's, uh, that's something <laughs> uh, we never thought that that much hair is going every day. <laughs> yes, it's a surprise. But uh, you see, we have approximately uh, around 1 million hairs okay. in our scalp. Oh. Many people might have more than this, but this is an approximate thing and our hair goes through cycle oh. this is a growth phase of the hairs which is called as anagen phase okay this lasts around five to six years okay then there is a resting phase which is around three months okay and then the hair fall okay. so it's a natural cycle of the hairs mm -hmm. which they have to shed they have to fall okay but when anywhere in between this cycle is disrupted mm -hmm. and we start having more hair fall mm -hmm. than what we grow over the hairs. Uh -huh, okay. Then we see it visibly. They are uh, all uh, around us on our pillow, yeah. on our comb, on our clothes. So then we say, yes, it's a hair fall and we must consult a doctor for this. So immediately when we see this, we have to come uh, consult a dermatologist. Yes, if it's increasing day by day, so one should not wait and then one should consult a dermatologist. Okay. What are the reasons? I know there will be n number of reasons uh, for hair fall, but primarily what are the reasons for hair fall? Oh, well, uh, the reasons could be according to the cause of the hair fall. Okay. Like I mentioned before, there is a cycle okay. and there is a hair follicle okay. and the hair follicle has got cells which mature very fastly. Okay. Anywhere with, when these cells are affected or when this maturity or when this cell division is affected, mm -hmm. it could lead, lead to the hairs falling down. Okay. Now, uh, what could cause this, yeah. what could cause this to happen yeah. is most commonly seen is a hormonal deficiency okay. or a vitamin deficiency. Okay. These are very common issues which we come across daily. Okay. So first and moreover, there could be an autoimmune process also, okay. uh, which means that the cells of our own body, they fail to recognize the cells okay. of own body and okay. they start attacking it. Okay. So that results in what we call as a spot baldness okay. or which we call alopecia. Okay. There are certain scarring conditions also mm -hmm. in which scars are formed on the scalp. Okay. Now these scars, they damage the cell, uh, the cells of the mitosis, which which are undergoing the mitosis in the hair cycle. Okay. They damage it completely. Okay. And then the hair fall is non-reversible. Okay, that means permanent. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, what uh, majority of the population which they come across mm -hmm. is called as a male pattern or a female pattern alopecia. Okay. Uh, this is genetically determined. Okay. And hormonal based. So when the testosterone in our body mm -hmm. is converted into dihydrotestosterone, okay. now this DHT, mm -hmm. which accumulates in the hair follicles, okay. 
this causes hair fall it okay. causes the miniaturization means it makes the hair very small and mm -hmm. brittle mm -hmm. and uh, lifeless and okay. eventually they fall off okay so there so, could be many causes genetically nutritionally and uh, autoimmune any any causes can we classify this uh, hair falls are there any different types of hair falls yes 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 the the first the the first uh, the, and the commonest is the androgenetic alopecia Okay. which we are calling as the female pattern or the male pattern alopecia. Okay. The second category comes under telogen effluvium. Okay. Now, this under this, there could be hair fall due to a stress, a okay. prolonged illness. Okay. Uh, mainly we see, commonly which we see is after pregnancy, after delivery. Okay, yeah. Then nutritional deficiencies or a very prolonged treatment for some illness. Oh. So, we see all of a sudden that after the illness, after three months approximately, the situation has passed, hmm. but the patient experiences a hair shedding, a great hair fall. So then these conditions are called as telogen effluvium. Okay. Then there is another uh, classification where we call it alo uh, alopecia areata, okay. which is a spot baldness, which okay. I just now explained yeah, yeah, yeah. that it is an autoimmune. Okay. Then another classification is scarring, where the scars are formed okay. in certain situations, okay. like like in planus, like sacrificial alopecia. Mm -hmm. In these situations, sometimes a very severe fungal infection mm -hmm. can also lead to scar formation. Okay. So now these scars, they are irreversible. Okay. So it's my advice to better see first and immediately report or come to the doctor as soon as the hair fall increases. Okay. So this baldness and uh, hair fall, is it uh, two different things or one is leading to the other? Uh, yes. The hair fall eventually leads to the baldness. Okay. The baldness is evident when it's evident hair fall mm -hmm. or when the hair starts thinning around, mm -hmm. then it's uh, baldness. Okay. So, what are the other causes like environmental causes? You have been describing the medical causes or the genetic causes, but there are so many environmental factors oh, yes. which contribute, right? Of course, What yes. are they? I always tell my patients that, uh, that uh, uh, well, uh, uh, the water itself, mm -hmm. uh, a too much hard or salty water, yeah. this can lead to the brittleness of the hairs. Okay. They don't go inside the roots to cause root damage but they actually make the hairs very brittle yeah, okay. and they eventually lead to the hair fall. Okay. Then um, certain very hot climatic conditions mm -hmm. where uh, people are wearing helmets and they are going on, the, on their uh, motorbike and mm -hmm. they are sweating around yeah. and it's get collected okay. under the scalp. So this uh, leads to fungal infections of the scalp. It leads because there is lack of oxygen supply during okay. that time. Okay. So the hairs don't get the proper nourishment at that time. Mm -hmm. And eventually, due to this stress, the hair falls. Okay. Moreover, so many cosmetic products are available in the market. And prolonged use or a lot of use of yes. these products uh, is not advisable. Okay. Uh, very harsh treatment, hair treatments are... Mm. Uh, Little, very common nowadays. Yeah, very yeah. common nowadays. So uh, they should be avoided. Okay. If anybody needs them, they can do it once in six months. Mm -hmm. But daily treatments or weekly treatments should be avoided. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, see, so we were discussing about this cosmetic treatments, like what we all do once in a while, because it is inevitable in this part of the world. But then, in case if we are going for such treatments, uh, is there any kind of uh, supplements or protective system that we can uh, follow? Yes. Uh, first of all, we should always look about our nutrition and mm -hmm. diet. Okay. That is very important mm -hmm. because hair eventually is a protein; it's a keratin. Okay. So we need a very good diet, okay. very good hydration, yeah. which should, the diet should contain, apart from proteins, very good antioxidants also, okay. so that it helps in the hair growth. Plus, some diets are also containing the DHT blockers. Okay. Okay. So, they should also be taken like almonds, like walnuts. Okay. So, these prevents the hair loss. Okay. So, they should be tomatoes. A very good okay. source of lycopene which prevents the hair loss 
so they should be taken in the diet. Avoid too much harsh treatments to the scalp. Exactly, yeah. Eventually, too much hard treat, uh, treatment like overheating mm -hmm. or over drying the scalp mm -hmm. or uh, going through some keratin bonding yeah. or straightening, yeah. this could be limited down, okay. cut short, limited down, so as to prevent the natural growth okay. of the hairs. Okay. So yeah. keratin is the uh, most important uh, like element of hair, right? Mm -hmm. Is there any products uh, naturally that we can, you know, boost the keratin in the keratin hair? Keratin is present in all, uh, it's a protein. Okay. So it's present in all the legumes, all the pulses, okay. all green leafy vegetables okay. Okay. in our diets. It's okay. present there. Okay. So whichever thing boosts the proteins will mm -hmm. boost the keratin level. Okay. Uh, like this post-pregnancy hair fall, what we can uh, do to like you know reduce that one, because that is something uh, unavoidable, oh, yes. right? Oh yes, the patients when they um, when after pregnancy or after delivery, uh, most important thing is first to see the iron and folic acid levels. Okay. Vitamin D deficiency. Yes, yes. These are very very common issues that mm -hmm. come to mind. Thyroid issues. Yes. They have to be searched, a proper blood test has to be done. Mm -hmm. These things to be seen that is there any underlying nutritional deficiency or mm -hmm. vitamins? Mm -hmm. Zinc could be a very big issue. Vitamin B12 could be a very big issue. Oh. Biotin B7 oh. could be a very big element. Okay. So we have to see these underlying nutritional deficiencies. Okay. Secondly, if these deficiencies are overcome, mm. This is a psychological uh, okay, phase, okay. a psychological hair fall, which okay. we say. Because the, the lady has gone through a lot of stress, the hairs have all of a sudden went into the second phase. The okay. first phase is the growth phase, the second phase is the resting phase. Okay. So they will go through, because of the stress, they go through this phase. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, after three months, they just fall. Okay. Doctor, sorry to interrupt, we have a caller. Hello? Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to Care and Cure. Aradha. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah. My name is uh, Sara. Okay, Sara, you can talk to the doctor. Yes. Yes, please talk. Uh, hi, doctor. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, doctor, you understand uh, Hindi? Yes, of course. Uh, okay. Just only one question. Uh, actually, my face is very much hair. Like, there are very much hair. And it doesn't end. And the face is very much dry. Yes. Okay. Sara, speak, speak. Don't listen to TV. Yes, Sara. You tell me. Tell me. Yes. So, I wanted to ask you, how can you hair from the face? Okay. Apart from that, do you have acne on your face and your weight has been increased? Okay. Please tell me. Yes, my weight has been increased, but it can be increased Yes, it can be increased because the hair is very high on the face and the face Okay, this is a condition where it's called hirsutism. Okay, and okay. this is uh, the underlying condition for this is PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. Here okay. we need to go to the level of the hormones. The hormones okay. need to be tested. You okay. hormonal checkup or ultrasound okay. to rule out any cystic ovary. And we okay. try to reduce the weight also. Okay. okay. So that in turn will help the reduction of hairs on your face. Okay. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Just well, okay, Sarah. Me. Thank you yeah, so much. Thank you. Doctor, we have one more caller. Hello. Sure. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to Care and Cure. Hello. Hello. Yeah, TV the volume on the radio see you. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, sorry. Hello. Arada. Chinnu. Chinnu, doctor. Hi, doctor. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, doctor, actually, I've done the smoothening treatment. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've been doing it for the past three to four years. Mm -hmm. But for the recent one, I've got very bad hair fall. Okay, and it's like, uh, and I get acne. I got acne after, I mean, after doing the smoothening treatment. So do you suggest me to use a medicated shampoo or the ones that the parlor people suggested? Of course, uh, what I will suggest you is to under uh, first of all do your blood test 
okay and see if there is any underlying nutritional deficiency along with this okay okay secondly as i suggested to uh, reduce the number of hair treatments that you take in the parlor okay it's 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 a good idea to go to parlor once in a while but okay. avoid it for the next 6 months okay and thirdly uh, the shampoo which you are using you must look at it that it should be sulfate free okay it should not contain the detergent rather okay. it if it contains a ketoconazole shampoo okay so i'm using a ketoconazole shampoo somehow the research has says that it is not only helping in fungal infections but ketoconazole also is anti androgenic so okay. that means it helps in stopping the dht formation so okay. it helps in the hair, hair growth also okay fine okay uh, doctor can i ask you something uh, not regarding the hair but regarding my son's skin yeah please sure please, please go ahead. <laughs> okay okay doctor actually he is 2 years old Sure. Initially, when I mean, uh, when he was somewhere around six months, uh, they said he was having some atopic dermatitis. Okay. Okay. But now, if I don't apply the cream for him for two days, again it's getting dry. But if I apply the cream, it's all fine. Okay. So you are. I mean, do you suggest me to use it for entire his life, uh, or will it get better? I uh, don't worry it will definitely get better once he is around 6 to 8 years of age okay okay actually in atopic dermatitis as we all know it's an excessive dry skin condition okay so the cells in between they don't have the moisture in them so oh, okay fine so we need to apply reapply and keep on applying the moisturizer okay so i shouldn't skip it just remember one thumb rule Okay. The dryness will increase his itchiness. Okay. So in order to reduce and itchiness will lead to further inflammation, further uh-huh. irritant and further infection. So okay. in order to reduce that, keep him moisturized as much as you can okay. and the moisturizer should be lipid based so that it goes it penetrates in the skin very nicely. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, Chinnu, thank you so thank much. You so well, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. bye. Uh, doctor, we were talking about a uh, vitamin D deficiency, which will be very common uh, in this part of the world. So, how can we beat with that? Okay, first of all, like in when in our childhood, we used to play a lot in the sun. Yes, exactly. So that's missing out uh, from all our lives. We're yes. in every part of the world. Even in India, it's missing yes, now. Yes, 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 it's missing nowadays. And if we suppose say the child to play in a harsh sun, mm-hmm. even that. Um, could harm the skin okay so we can't even advise to play a lot in the harsh sun okay. over here okay so uh, yes a vitamin d deficiency is very very common mm-hmm. in adults as well as in children okay and the best way is to see mm-hmm. of course hair loss is there mm-hmm. progressive tiredness mm-hmm. okay feeling tired low mood mm-hmm. irritability okay these are some of the things okay. that give an alarming joint pains okay so these are the things body aches okay. where there is no evident um, cause okay. uh, it will be uh, sure it would be underlying vitamin d deficiency okay so it is always advisable to get it tested like once in 6 months or how is that uh, yes. interval to get it tested yes if everything is going normal mm-hmm. in a normal adult mm-hmm. i would recommend the test in once Six to eight months. Okay. And suppose if any deficiency is formed mm-hmm. or it's found or the symptoms are there, mm-hmm. then one should have at least the test done once in three months. Okay. So that it can be regulated and it could be seen. Okay. And this uh, deficiency will lead to other problems as well, right? Like this obesity and which in turn leads to. Inf- I think everything is connected. Everything right? is connected. Everything is connected with one or the other. Okay. Symptoms. Another uh, biggest problem what we all face is dandruff. How how it is treated and what are the causes? Okay, if we understand how the dandruff is formed, mm. basically there is a very very mild fung- fungus that mm. stays in each and every uh, of one of us. Okay. Okay. Now the hair follicles are there which mm. are secreting sebum or oil. Okay. This fungus when comes in contact with the oil. Mm. it forms a kind of a flaky substance okay. yes. and we see from our eyes as dandruff yes 
So this dandruff, now when it's already there on the scalp, it's actually hampering. It's actually closing the way the channels, okay. you know, like what is pollution to our face yeah. is dandruff to the scalp. Okay, okay. It's just closing the channels from where oxygen can go, where okay. nutrients can go. Mm -hmm. And uh, that further leads to a situation where the hairs don't get what is being given to them. Okay, okay. Secondly, it is seen somehow the studies are still going on mm -hmm. that those who have dandruff, mm -hmm. they are prone to have more DHT. Okay. Now, DHT collects as places where there is less hair supply, okay. uh, blood supply. Okay, okay. So, when the blood supply becomes less, mm -hmm. DHT is collected over there okay. and the hair falls down. Okay. So, if we remove the dandruff, mm -hmm. we are somehow, if we try to increase the blood supply of mm -hmm. the area, okay. definitely it will reduce DHT, okay. which in turn will increase the hair growth. Okay. So, uh, now we have this very common habit of uh, you know, over-the-counter medicines for this dandruff and all. Is it advisable or when should we consult a doctor in case of dandruff? Oh, well, well uh, at the first sight of even dandruff, one should consult the doctor. Okay. Uh, the dandruff, in, in fact, the coconut oil mm -hmm. is very much advisable. Okay. Coconut oil helps a lot. Okay. In, in removing the dandruff, okay. but it's advisable to use it only twice a week or thrice a week. Okay. So, oil massage does help? Yes, the coconut oil, the rosemary oil mm -hmm. and a few drops of uh, onion, uh, onion uh, juice. juice. Yeah, I was about to ask that. It is very viral now, you know, when you apply mm -hmm. this onion juice, uh, the hair fall will, uh, will be reduced and all these things. Yes, yes, a lot. The internet is full of it. Yes. So, uh, but onion juice just uh, itself okay. is an irritant. Okay. It might irritate the scalp further and people will land up into itching and mm -hmm. irritation of the scalp. Mm -hmm. So onion juice when combined okay. with coconut oil okay. and rosemary oil. Okay. Rosemary oil is, has, the research says that it blocks the DHT. Again, okay. the DHT is the main main culprit okay. for hair loss. So when it blocks it, it's a very good uh, oil for the hair growth. Okay. When it combines with coconut oil, the coconut oil gives the uh, anti-dandruff effect. Okay. And when it combines with the onion juice, a little bit, a pinch of an onion juice, mm -hmm. so that gives a very great altogether effect to, and it should be massaged. Okay. Massaged on Proper the Proper massage is required yes. to increase the blood supply and yes. all these things. Yes. Like uh, we have this misconception like when we wash the hair daily, like there is hair fall and all. Is it like that or how, how often we should wash our hair? Oh well, uh, taking a bath is necessary for everyone yeah. and it should be taken daily. Yeah. But hair wash, I would suggest is accordingly should be done alternate days. Okay. That's the best thing. Mm -hmm. Scrubbing or unnecessarily washing, hmm. it's not needed every day. Okay. Those who have got an oily scalp hmm. can increase the number of times okay. for the bath, hmm. but those from normal to dry scalp, hmm. they can limit it to just thrice a week or twice a week. Okay. And how about this shampoos? How often we should shampoo our hair? Uh, similarly, it depends on how the scalp is. Okay. If it's an oily scalp, mm -hmm. we need an alternate days. Okay. But if it's a dry to normal scalp, mm -hmm. we can do it twice a week. Okay. So, when we select shampoos also, what all we should uh, take here? We should see that it should be sulfate and detergent free. Okay. That's the very important thing. Okay. Those which make the bubbles, okay. you know, those shampoos which make a lot of bubbles, yeah. they have more detergent in them. Okay. Those uh, which are soft mm -hmm. and it's written on them, sulfate free. Ah, okay. So those are the recommended ones. Okay. So we should always go for sulfate free shampoos. Yes. Doctor, we'll just take a short break and we'll continue after that. Karen Kurler, Cherry, a break and a break nation window mirror. Welcome back to Care and Cure. Doctor, apart from this uh, diet and medicines and all, what are the other modern treatments available now for hair fall as well as other skin problems? 
Okay. Now, uh, apart from these, certain aesthetic procedures are also there. Okay. Uh, this includes the microneedling. Okay. Okay. This includes the PRP mm -hmm. that we do, a low light laser okay. therapy. Okay. And uh, yes, after that, of course, hair transplant. Okay, so you can uh, just uh, describe one by one so that you know, we'll get an idea like what is this oh, sure. microneedling and all. Oh, sure, sure. Actually, uh, in microneedling, mm -hmm. uh, before we used to do with the derma, uh, derma roller. Okay. Now it's done with the derma pen. Okay. Now that has a very fine micro needles in it. Okay. And those are circulated in the scalp. Okay. We can do it for the face, we can do it for the hands, for any part of the body, okay. which shows the signs of aging. Oh, okay. Now, the basic purpose of this is the needles uh, uh, go inside the scalp to mm -hmm. a certain depth. Oh, okay. they, the where we actually need these cocktail of vitamins. Okay. So, while the, the derma pen or these needles are being rolled in a very controlled way, mm -hmm. simultaneously we pour these multivitamins, these cocktails of vitamins mm -hmm. or your own plasma. Okay. Okay? okay. So, both can help in hair growth. Okay. The, the purpose of the needles is to create a micro channels okay. and it creates thousands of micro channels okay. and creates thousands of micro injuries. Okay. Now, this the beauty of the treatment is that if you are injured, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 it causes a scar at that place. Yeah. But the beauty of this treatment is that these micro injuries instead stimulate your own collagen. Okay. Your own growth factors are stimulated. Okay. So that the result is a very good rejuvenated skin okay. as well as increase in the hair growth. Okay. Uh, is that painful? Because you are saying micro needle and all, <laughs> is it painful? Yes, uh, it's actually not painful because we apply certain local topical anesthetic cream okay. on the face mm -hmm. and on the scalp, mm -hmm. it's done in a very fast way. Ah, okay. On the scalp, we cannot apply the anesthetic cream ah, okay. uh, because it doesn't work that well. Okay. And secondly, it's too messy for okay. the patient. Yeah, okay. And how about this PRP? Okay, now the full form of the PRP is platelet-rich plasma. Okay. As we know that our uh, blood contains certain growth factors mm -hmm. uh, which can stimulate the growth of the collagen, mm. our own natural collagen. Okay. So what we do is like when it's just a walk-in procedure, mm -hmm. half an hour time. Okay. Yeah, we take the sample, the blood sample. It's just nine ml. Okay. So the same amount of blood which you give for your blood tests. Okay. Not more than that. Okay. That is uh, taken from uh, yeah. uh, the patient's own body. Patient's own body. Okay. And that uh, blood is circulated in centrifuge okay. at a very high rate. Mm -hmm. So after centrifuge, this separates. Okay. The top portion comes out as the plasma okay. and the lower portion, the cells are there, the red cells are there. Okay. We need this plasma. Okay. The plasma is very, very rich in growth factors, okay. which has platelets in it and growth factors in it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called platelet-rich plasma. Okay. So now we take this uh, plasma mm -hmm. and we re-inject it intralesionally. Okay. To the scalp. Okay. So we give a lot of injections on the scalp, whichever areas uh, are showing hair fall or hair deficiency. Mm -hmm. This in turn, it gives a very boosting effect okay. and gives a very good results for the hair growth. Okay. This is very common now? People yes. are opting this? Yes, people are op opting this. It, uh, you can have uh, one session per week mm -hmm. for around a period of four weeks to six weeks okay. and then follow up every month okay. for a period of say three months okay. for one session every month okay. and then maintenance session as per required okay. and it gives really good results. So we can uh, follow up with our daily routine after this? Also. Yes, it's just a walk-in procedure. Within okay. half an hour, uh, the patient is free. They can go back home and they can continue their activities. Okay. Uh, anything mm. else other than this to any other modern treatments you have? Hair fall. Oh well, then there is a low laser light therapy. Okay. Okay. Actually, it's still under studies, and um, quite a lot has been done on this field also. Mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, actually seen then when the laser is at a low level, mm -hmm. then it co goes to the hair follicles okay. and stimulates the mm -hmm. growth. Mm -hmm.
So that is how it works. Mm -hmm. Similarly, it has the sessions has to be taken. Okay. Uh, yeah, continuous sessions has to be taken. And yes, the results are very good okay. for that also. Okay. So if all this is not going to work, then you finally go for the hair transplantation. Yes. Uh, see, the, the, when the patient starts uh, their uh, treatment, mm -hmm. whichever kind it might be, mm -hmm. either uh, nutritional deficiencies mm -hmm. or through medications or topical applications or aesthetic procedures mm -hmm. or PRPs or any of the procedures, they must wait for a period of 12 to 18 months. Ah, okay. It's only after first six months that the results starts, evident results starts. Okay. First the hair fall decreases mm -hmm. and then the hair growth comes. Okay. So it's, so, it's like uh, you are doing some kind of seeding of hair or? Yes, exactly. Our hairs are like uh, flower pots in our house. Okay. <laughs> the way we treat our flower pots, the way we nourish them, the way we keep them, exactly similar is the hairs. Okay. They need nutrients, they need regular uh, watering, they need regular uh, food, diet, everything they need, massage in the form of, you know, uh, yeah. uh, stimulation, they need everything. And still, let me make one thing very clear, like mm. the plants, mm. those who have already broken mm. will eventually fall. Okay. okay. But those that can be retained mm. with this kind of care mm. is the ones that we try to protect. Okay. Uh, when you were talking about broken, I was just uh, remembering the split ends. It's like very, very common. Yes. What are the causes of uh, split ends? Too much hair treatments. Number one okay. cause okay. is too much hair treatments. Like when we go for some um, uh, hair rebonding or we go for straightening or mm -hmm. we go for some very shiny products mm -hmm. or, or gels in our scalp, Later on, what we see is that due to excessive heat or due to excessive treatments, mm. the, and the hairs become brittle mm. and the ends become the split ones. Okay. Okay. Even if we have seen that, even if we reduce the length and we keep on reducing the length, it doesn't help much. Okay. It, only a proper diet, nutrition, care can help. Okay. Uh, so you mean to say that even if we cut our hairs, because generally that yes. is what is told. Yes, if that's you have why split I mentioned ends, it. Yeah. Yeah. So that is not going to help. No, it's not going to help that much. Okay. As much as a correct diet okay. and a correct lifestyle can help. Okay. Since you were uh, describing about a correct diet, uh, can you just uh, you know describe like what should be an ideal diet for a healthy skin and hair? Okay. Uh, eggs, very okay. important role for okay. proteins. Hmm. Uh, our food should have, a breakfast should have eggs in them. Okay. At least one egg a day. Okay. okay. If can take two, it's better. Okay. Secondly, coming to the other uh, area like uh, our lunch, mm -hmm. lot of pulses, okay. green salads, mm -hmm. green vegetables mm -hmm. should be there. Mm -hmm. Then colorful fruits should be there. As okay. much color is there, the better it is. Okay. The red color fruits or the orange color or you know the, the more color it has the better antioxidants they are okay. so the better they will be for the mm -hmm. health mm -hmm. green tea an evening green tea rather uh, a morning green tea or an evening green tea rather than caffeine okay that will be very good okay uh, for the hairs okay and uh, yeah and uh, what in uh, non veg diet okay. a lot of fish mm. because omega 3, omega 3 is yeah. there and uh, uh, we can, you know, increase as much fish at least once in a week or twice in a week. Fish okay. should be included in the diet. Okay. That will boost the hair growth. Okay. So the diet should be full of uh, fruits and fruits, vegetables. vegetables, salads and fishes. Okay. Uh, similar to mm -hmm. this uh, skin Botox, uh, we can very commonly see in parlors and all Botox treatment for hair. Yes. Uh, how, um, like, how good is that or uh, is it medically... Oh, uh, well, again, this in the parlors, mm -hmm. what they do is actually just, uh, I, again, a rebonding or a keratin treatment or a hair botox treatment mm -hmm. is overdoing it will definitely harm. Okay. Overdoing the treatment is going to definitely harm it. So it's always advisable to do it with a doctor. Itself. Yes. Nothing, uh, botox, what we get in the parlors are not the kind of botox what you are talking. No. 
Okay. They are a different category. Okay. And what we do with the skin is a different category. Okay. So Botox, where they do is usually for straightening or usually for lightening, yeah. usually for these things, mm -hmm. which are chemical based. Okay. While the actual Botox, which we place in the, um, in the clinics, mm -hmm. is for the wrinkles, for the dynamic wrinkles. Okay. Uh, dynamic means that when we are smiling or when we are laughing, the wrinkles are there. Okay. But when we are uh, just uh, sitting calmly, the wrinkles don't appear. Okay. So for that purpose, we apply the Botox. Okay. Now everyone is too much behind this uh, laser therapy and laser hair removals and all these things. This laser hair removals, are they good in the long run or? Yes, they are good okay. in lo wrong, long run. See, uh, our, as our hairs, they have a cycle of six or approximately six mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So what I suggest, and the laser works only on the colored hairs. Uh -huh. Laser doesn't work on the white hairs. Oh, okay. So I always suggest that please go ahead with the laser hair removal before they become white. Okay. It's, it's absolute amazing treatment, especially mm -hmm. for people who are, who are her, uh, suffering from hirsutism, from polycystic, mm -hmm. from facial, unwanted facial growth, mm -hmm. uh, the upper chin, uh, the lower chin, mm -hmm. these areas, the facial hairs, mm -hmm. the side locks. For them, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this hair fall, is it a symptom of any other underlying disease? Could it be a symptom? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. See, the hair fall can be a result of a very prolonged illness. Okay. In cases of prolonged illnesses also, whereby the patient, even we have seen it in viral uh, fever also. Okay. If it's a prolonged viral fever, then also through the stress, the body goes through stress. Mm -hmm. And the hairs also go through stress. Okay. They quickly pass from their growth phase, which is anagen phase, to their resting phase, which is catagen phase. Okay. Now this phase, after this phase, after the disease goes away, within three months, because now they are in their second phase already, yes, yes. so they have to shed out. Okay. So they, within three months, they shed down. Okay, okay. So indirectly, yes, a prolonged illness mm. can result in the hair fall. This is very commonly seen and it's called as telogen effluvium. Okay. Like, uh, do we have, uh, you know, like this age factor, is that having any influence on this? Do we need to say that, okay, if you cross this age, you can expect hair fall? The is male there? pattern and the female pattern hair loss is basically genetically determined, mm -hmm. genetically based. Mm -hmm. And yes, since uh, it's a little over 40, when the 40s or 35, 40, approximately during that time, it's when the genes start, you know, showing their... Uh, effects. Okay. So basically, yes, this is a male pattern baldness or female pattern baldness. We usually see around 35, 40, 45 mm. years of the age. Okay. Is it uh, connected to this menopause, hair fall? Yes. Uh, usually in females, mm. what happens is the estrogen is the protective hormone. Okay. So when they are having cycles, mm. as long as their menstrual cycle is there, the estrogenic effect is there, okay. which protects the hairs from falling down. But when they go through the mm. perimenopausal and slowly the menopausal uh, phase, then this estrogen effect is going down and finally it, it stops. So this help of the estrogen is not there. Okay. to sustain the hairs. Okay. So females start losing the hairs. Okay. Now what happens is that their hair pattern loss is little different from the males. Okay. The males uh, they have on the back vertex than in the central yeah. and the hairline starts receding okay. while in the female the front hairline is maintained okay. but the crown area they lose the hairs okay. or they see the thinning of the hairs mm -hmm. over okay. there. Okay. I was about to come to that question in fact. Yeah. Like the baldness, it is very common in uh, men compared to females. Uh, what is the reason? Uh, is it because of the climatic problems or or there by gene it is like that? Uh, no, mostly it's because most commonly it's because the hormone testosterone. Okay. 
the testosterone, as I told, that mm -hmm. it gets converted into dihydrotestosterone. Okay. This is also genetically determined. Okay, okay. And more determined in males. Okay. It's not that the females don't have it. They have it, but the quantity is less. less. The more is in the males. Mm -hmm. So when this converts into DHT, this DHT is the main culprit. Okay. It gets accumulated in the places on the body where there is less hair circ uh, blood circulation. Okay. So it goes and gets accumulated on the hair follicles. These hair follicles, they become start becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. So what we see initially is not uh, the hair fall. Okay. We see the thinning. Okay. That all of a sudden, through a certain period of time, they start thinning out. Okay. And then finally, they fall out. They fall out. Okay. Uh, this hair fall, is there any situation where kids are affected with this? Yes, after a prolonged illness, okay. nutritional deficiencies, okay. diet deficiency in okay. protein, okay. Uh, very, uh, very common uh, situation which is uh, uh, protein malnutrition. Okay. Very common situation okay. where the diet is not adequate in proteins okay. and the nutrition is not adequate for vitamins. Mm -hmm. Hair fall, we come across hair fall as young as three or four years old child. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing we do is check the vitamin level, mm -hmm. the vitamin D level, iron level, okay. folic, folic acid level. Okay. So these things have to be tested. Okay. We find the majority of children to be iron deficient, okay. vitamin D deficient. Mm -hmm. And then we correlate it to their environmental factors, which they are, I mean, most of the time they are inside the house. Okay. So then we correct these deficiencies. And uh, along with that, we, I tell the patients to have a good oil massage, yeah. keep doing things which are increasing the circulation, okay. like diet, exercise, hair massages, okay. these things, even with the children. Okay. So this helps to yes, boost up. And the children shows results faster than the adults. Okay, okay. Yeah. So before we just conclude, let me just ask one more question. Like, uh, kids, how often we should shampoo them? Okay, for the kids, it holds the same uh, rule as it's for the adults. Okay, okay. If the scalp is very oily, full of dandruff, so it needs more shampoo. Okay. It needs almost alternate days. Okay. But if the scalp is all right, okay. and if uh, there is no such uh, oiliness or greasiness in the scalp, they can be reduced to twice a week. Okay. But at least twice a week, they should be given a shampoo. Thank you so much, Doctor. It was Thank so you. nice talking to you and Thank very informative you. also. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for your time. And the care and care segment is now. So, I'm going to tell you about the women's area. I'm going to tell you about the women's area. Bye bye.